end. And so, you know, let me be more specific about questions that you might want to ask of yourself, because um, this is this is how you you, you kind of channel this stuff. So, if you're a startup, if if an investor is looking at you, this is the three things they they wonder about: Is this a real market? Do you have the right product? Is this the right team? So, I would offer to you: You should worry about that, wonder about that, work on that. And just here's some ways of thinking about it. And, and, and be insecure about it. Not in a debilitating way, as I said. I'll get to that, but, but in a positive way. So market. For me, the metaphor, which I learned from Bill Gross at Idea Lab, um, which is a great one, is um, uh, a real problem is one that keeps people up at night. Um, maybe practically speaking, like they literally lose sleep because they worry about it. People don't like to lose sleep, so um, they allocate budget to things to keep them from losing sleep. So again, I, while I'm talking on a metaphoric level, oftentimes this actually plays out in real life. The more people worry about certain things, the more they're going to want to get real solutions for them. And the more you have a real market that will last. You may therefore say, I don't understand the real problem that was solved with a pet rock. Well, um, uh, a pet rock. Um, turns out solved a problem we have for novelty. But novelties, um, the nature of that is it change, changes quickly. So we don't, we don't, you know, that was a comet. Came and, and left. There are other novelties. Real problems, they last. We've got real problems in energy. We've got real problems in affordable housing. We've got real problems in, in health care. Probably another discussion about wedding profit and purpose, which someday we should have. Um, because I, I kind of biased it with problems that, that, that relate to that. But the question I would ask is, am I dealing in an area where you know, I'm solving real problems? Um, and, and by the way, the problems don't have to be huge markets. And let me be very clear about that. It can be very small little things that you're doing. That's, that's fine. Um, but just make sure that there's enough people who care about that so that when you do the math, you can earn a living. So that's market. Two, product. So there may be a real market. Maybe plenty of people who, who are concerned about the things that it is that you aspire to do. But do you have the right product for that market? Um, and I like to really understand, break that problem down as much as pro possible to say, well, what are the kind of the key things that they value? And then literally make a matrix. Well, here are the features against those key things that, that solve it. So for example, Apple, and I, I worked briefly at Apple, is, is famous for doing great product requirement docs. And, and the reason why the iPhone is so elegant is that they really deconstructed the issue of what's got to be in a great smartphone. Um, and for example, one key thing is you got to be able to hand, hold it with one hand and do everything with one hand. Can't do it with two hands. Like BlackBerry requires two hands. And arguably, you can do email better. But you know who, what's happening with RIM and what's happening? The bigger problem for more people isn't that. That's more of a niche play. Apple's solving the bigger problem, which is people, just one hand. I want to text and drive. You shouldn't do that, but you know. Um, so then the third thing is, um, all right, kind of clear on the market, kind of clear on the product. Do I have the right skills as a leader to lead this team? And do I have the right team in place to execute on that? And there are a bunch of questions about that. And, and I realize each of these things, they're lectures unto themselves. But I guess what I'm hopefully illustrating is that um, if you aren't complacent about these things, if you question them, um, you will get good answers. And this is really important. And, and, um, uh, it, and really, if you can nail this, you will inevitably create great product. It used to be in businesses, as in software, that we spent a lot of time planning, thinking about things, then doing it. So in software, the old method was called the waterfall method. You, you, you spent 70 percent of your time designing, and then you would code it, and that was the metaphor of the waterfall. It's kind of smooth design, you know, we're having a good time, sipping latte, latte's program, hey, um, chaotic, um, and then hopefully we get back to the smooth times. That's not how software development's done anymore. Indeed, it's not how web businesses are done anymore. Indeed, it's not the way I think you all should consider doing your businesses if you, if you do or don't. I'm getting lost in the metaphor. But um, uh, what happens now in programming is, Two things. One, um, object-oriented. So um, things that you do a lot, a lot, you just create objects that do those things. Draw to the screen. Here's an object. Anytime I need to draw the screen, I just send it information. But more relevantly, 
um, it's you, you test important processes. If it works, great. Then you go to the next problem. And you don't code the whole, you don't design the whole system. You, you, you start with components that you know are important. You try them. If they don't work, you, you refine them. Think about that for your business, particularly in the context of all those questions I just mentioned. Try things. Um, uh, at Idea Lab, Bill Gross had this idea for um, a company that would sell you a car online and literally deliver it on a, on a flatbed. Like you'd buy it online, sell it for man. So one Friday night, he had Tom Hughes, who was the head of design, design this uh, website. We called it Cars Direct, put it up, no PR. This is before Google, because this is the uh, uh, late 90s. Um, uh, and here's the plan that we had discussed. If anybody buys, somehow they find it and they buy it, I will literally go to a dealer, buy it, and we'll have it delivered. And I, yes, I'm going to have to pay more, but I'm just testing the concept. By Sunday night, there were like five orders. And he, he said, shut it down, shut it down. This is because, and, and, and I mean, it still blows me away. How the hell did anybody find this thing? And they even trusted enough to put down deposit. It blows me away. And that became Cars Direct, which went public, which actually just had a, um, was taken private again uh, by a private equity firm, which was a, a, a nice liquidity event for Idea Lab. So, um, uh, what I'm sharing with this is you can test things, and you should often, and then course correct along the way as you, as you learn what works. Um, if you are an existing business, really the same process applies, except that consider this. It may be going well now, railroad companies back in the day before, you know, plane travel or um, uh, typewriters before computers, Wang, remember Wang? Um, but you need to understand where your market's going. So again, be insecure about that. Andy Grove wrote a whole book about that, Only the Paranoid Survive. And that was his major thesis. Like, I, if, if, if we have to realize um, that the market's changed, it's too late. We need to be so in, in touch with that, insecure about what we're doing, even when we're on top of the market, that we're constantly thinking through, where's this going? Where's this going? And what does it mean for our products? What does it mean to the team? That we anticipate this stuff so that we're on the front of the change, defining it, in fact, right? Um, so the same process. So, you know, the key here, it's, it's avoiding complacency. It's testing assumptions. It's being open to new data uh, that impact what you're doing. In, in security, by definition, gives you that. Um, let me acknowledge that certainly insecurity or doubt can be debilitating, and at extremes you can lose like way too much um, uh, sleep, weight, perhaps hair. Um, uh, you know, you can resort to you know unhealthy things, drinking and, and drugs, and 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 absolutely, and some of that will happen, hopefully in small quantities. I mean, you will lose sleep, you know, you will lose hair. It's a bummer, but hey, I'm cool with it. Um, uh, um, and, and, you know, you may need to get help. I mean, I understand that. Um, I'm not naive about that. But I guess I um, am uh, hopefully um, sharing stuff you don't already know, but you're looking at me going, all right, brother or sister. Um, uh, I'm a brother, um, but you may be a sister. Um, you know, I relate to that. Thank you for reminding me. Um, it's subtle stuff. It's the little victories at overcoming this stuff that give you the tools to continue with it, to understand this too shall pass, to have the 100-yard stare, to know that the slings and arrows, they will come. It's how you do, how you deal with them that defines your ability to deal with them.